I just want to like be passionate about my own craft, bro. Because if you really think about it, like everything I did from like this point, like it brought me here. Yeah. And it was because I was passionate when I was a kid or whatever the fuck it was. You know what I mean? I didn't do mm -hmm. shit to like be sitting here. Everything I did, I did it because I thought it was sick. And like now it's like, oh shit, everything worked out. Do you know what I mean? So I want to go back to like my earlier roots and just like whatever the fuck I like, I just want to, I want to do. It's like this, bro. It's like, I feel like everyone, especially in LA, they want like whatever the fuck, the fame, the girls, the cars, whatever the fuck it is. But like, they just got to focus on their craft, bro, because everything else is going to be up there. It's going to come when with you're, it. When you're, bro, when you're like up, everything's going to be up there. You don't got to think about the girls, the cars, what, everything is going to be up there when you're like killing it at life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't want to be like, I want a G-Wagon. I want like, no, I, fuck that. I just want to like do what I want to do. I want to be passionate. I want to just be motivated. And I know that everything else is going to be on top. Yo, 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 it's your boy Hakeem and you are watching Our Generation Music. And today, man, I have a very, very rare one. I know, you know, I'll be saying shit, but this is extremely fucking rare. My man, Burberry Airy, what's up, man? How are you? Bro, I'm great. I appreciate you, you know, sitting down with us. I think you have, and you have, and you, you really occupy a super unique space, I feel like, in this musical fashion and art culture. You know, we got we to gotta deep dive into it and get as much into your story as we possibly can. Um, first and foremost, man, we got to start your name, Burberry Airy. Wow. Because I think <laughs> there was one other person named <laughs> Burberry before this. <laughs> it was my homie Perry. That's crazy, bro. Yes. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So check this out. The first artist I ever was like, in love, bro, like this dude is so sick to me, mm -hmm. was Lil Yachty. Okay. And I swear to God, like, I went to a lot of shows back then, like a mm -hmm. lot of shows, but he was the first person I ever saw. And I remember it wasn't even his show. It was like, it was like a group of like five. Like I remember it was like Denzel Curry, like Lil Yachty, of course, and mm -hmm. whoever the fuck it was, but like, I just remember I went just for him and he only performed like three, four songs. It was at the observatory in Santa Ana. Mm -hmm. And I remember everyone performed, like whoever performed. And um, I'm not gonna lie, the crowd was like a little like, oh, you know, but as soon as Yachty came out, bro, yeah, like it was insane, bro. Like I remember okay. it was insane. So he had all these crazy ass songs, bro. That's why I love him. Cause he was so like, still is so sick as fuck. But at that time he was making music that was so different. So like, Early ass songs like uh, Minnesota. Nah, nah, bro. I'm talking early like Cats Out of the Bag. Oh wow. Or like um, all that. No, no, no. Uh, bro, what's that song? It's the Rugrat song. It goes like, it goes like, keep the chopper with me at all times. He's beef. I forgot I the name I of that shit. Not. It's so, bro. It was crazy. But anyway, the reason I'm not saying the reason why he was making this shit, but his duo, bro, was Burberry Perry. Also, Burberry Perry was making his own music like. Tech nine, mm -hmm. yeah, tech nine. That shit was crazy. But anyway, let me say something. So <laughs> I lost my Instagram and then, I don't know, I just made a new Instagram. And then I think like I was listening to a Burberry Perry song and mm -hmm. I was like, what, what should I name my, my at? Like what should my, my handle be? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh fuck it, my name's Eric. So I was like Burberry Airy, like Eric Airy. Yeah. I didn't fucking know it was gonna like, turn into, you know what I mean? Like, now you I gotta live this know, persona bro. now. Yes, this person, key, Burberry like, Airy. But anyway, shout out to Yachty and Perry, bro. They're, shout out to guys, the sailing team back bro, in the day. Oh, man. dude. That was a good time. That's times. so crazy. Very That's crucial to the development of SoundCloud and yes. just like, you know, that scene and, and how Perry's beats help push it forward. That's my brother. Um, we gotta tap back in. You know, you said early on you were going to shows. Um, it was one of your like first shows, mm -hmm. but we got to tap back in and just like growing up with you. Bam uh, Margera was oh, one of your yeah. favorites. 100%. Can we talk a little bit about like, you know, how Bam has influenced you in your life and everything? I feel like I definitely just like, whatever I grabbed from him was just like reckless shit. Like it wasn't even like, Bam wasn't even like my favorite skater because he skated a certain way. Mm -hmm. Like I just appreciated his aesthetic so much and yeah. he just fucked around like crazy. So as a kid, mm -hmm. I was like jumping off of roofs and just like being reckless like him. You know what I mean? I always wanted like a, a purple Lambo or whatever yeah. the fuck he was driving. Like I wanted what he had. 
And I remember just watching Viva La Bam, bro, and I'd just be like, I just wanted to be him so fucking bad, bro. Yo, Bam he, is like insane. Like, he's like, bro, he invented all this shit. And you know, the influence on Bam Margera is crazy. I mean, even now seeing like a lot of rappers, you know, doing the wearing hologram, the hologram, doing the fucking hologram, Like, bro. you know, rocking this punk you rack. Know, Bro, you know what's crazy is that's not even Bam's hardogram. He stole that from a band. He didn't steal yeah. it, but he... Is it CKRY? Nah, CKY, Can't Kill Yourself, that's something else. There's a band called Him, and Bam loved one of, his, one of their albums yeah. so much that he just took the hardogram and then he became like very good friends with the whole band. Mm -hmm. And then he just kind of like made him as his own, I guess, in a way. But that wasn't even his logo. Yeah. Like, it was Him's. Band, it's which crazy. is crazy. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, what age did you start like skating? Like, what age you picked the board up, and you know, when did you start realizing, like, damn, I'm actually good at this? So, bro, I started skating when I was like 11, and I just remember, bro, like, when I like, it sounds so corny, but like, when I met skateboarding, like, that's all I ever wanted to do. I mm -hmm. like became insanely obsessive over it, like, big time, you know, and um. When I was like hella young, my brother got married and he was young. He was like 18 when he got married. He's already yeah. divorced, but my mom worked like a lot. My dad left at a young age. I have a sister. I was just kind of alone. That's what I'm trying to say. I was alone most of my like childhood years. So all I wanted to do was skate, bro. So like low key, I didn't have like a dad or an older brother to be like, yo, watch this or like wear this or like listen to this music, you know? like. Growing up, bro, like, I just wanted to fucking skate, bro, period. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't have anyone to tell me what to do type shit. Mm -hmm. So I was in the streets a lot, bro. Like, my binoculars, bro, they were, like, they were seeing the same shit that, like, Stevie Wonder was seeing. Like, mm. you know what I mean? My binoculars were seeing a fucking, like, a Vetmont bomber jacket type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just skated, bro. I skated, skated, skated. And then I never really skated, though, to get good, bro. Like, I did, but... It just distracted me from like everything. Mm. I hated school. Like I cheated my way through fucking everything. Elementary school, middle school, high school. And I feel like I, I, I don't even know how to explain it, bro. Skateboarding just like, it brought something to me that I just wanted to escape. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I wasn't lonely when I was on my skateboard. That sounds like corny as fuck, but. I mean, it's an escape for yeah. sure. Like, especially with the type of childhood you have coming up. I remember for me, like, it was an escape. I remember sometimes I'm like at my saddest or lowest and I'll just go pick my board up and cruise all day. And yeah, like bro. My mind is at ease. I was know? at the skate park 24 seven, bro. Like literally like get out of school at like three and then I come home like at 930 and I do it all over again. Yeah. And I just always appreciated skateboarding because I just like as a kid, I was playing a lot of soccer and this was like the years that my dad was in my life type shit, you know, mm -hmm. so all these sports, bro, like, people tell you what to do, you know what I mean? You have a uniform, you have this. Yeah, like, yeah. my dad was, like, in the sidelines, like, yelling at me type shit when I would, I would, like, perform badly. So skateboarding is, like, an individual sport. It's just yeah. you and that fucking skateboard, you know? So, like, mm -hmm. I just, it's all I wanted to do because I was alone. Yeah. And, like, I just wanted to just live my life type shit, you know what I mean? So, again, bro, when I met skating, like, there's no other thing that I ever wanted to do. I remember I was in middle school and I had my first girlfriend and she kept begging me to go back to her house. Not to like do that type of shit, but just probably to hang out outside of school, you know? And I swear to God, bro, I tell her all the time, like, nah, I'm, I'm gonna go skate, I'm gonna go skate. And one time she fucking forced me to go to her house. And I, after school, walked with her in like halfway. This is some bitch ass shit, bro. But I started crying. And I was like, nah, fuck this. Like, I'm gonna go skate. I started crying, Damn. bro. I started crying, bro, because I wanted to go skate. Swear to God. Well, I nigga said, like, I'm, about to, I'm about to make love to my board, bitch. I ain't coming home with you. <laughs> nah, dead ass, bro. I was not trying to go to hers. I was trying to go to a skate park and, like, those were the best years of my life, bro. Well, at what point, though, did you realize, like, you are good at skateboarding. So, at Thank what you. point did you realize, like, oh, I actually am pretty good at this? Because, you know, you're doing stuff in the barracks. Like, you're playing yeah. niggas in skate. That like, fucking lost, but that's <laughs> Mr. Fucking Kickflip. Yeah. Nah, I just keep Nah, but... I guess I started getting really good, bro, when I was like, I'm gonna say 15. Okay. Like, I started doing like pretty sick tricks. And 
I don't know, but okay, let me like go back to the BAM shit or whatever the fuck it is, just just because I, it'll it'll tie in. But bro, I never wanted to like go pro and shit like that. I just liked it for the aesthetic, you know what I mean? So I was mm -hmm. never telling myself like I need to get good, I need I need to do this, I need to do that. Like, I was doing it because I loved it. So I guess when I started getting good, I still wasn't even like I gotta get better. Like I was just it was just like a more of a way of life. Exactly, thing. it was like it was it was my lifestyle. Yeah, still is in a way, but I never like. You know what I mean? Like yeah. nowadays, I don't really watch too many skate videos, but like, it's just so boring to me. Like, and I'm not even trying to speak negative. I'm yeah. really not. I mean, you're success you're to sure. everyone, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want you to succeed in everything. If you're happy, you're happy. But I never like. I, I wanted to see like reckless jackass, Viva La Bam shit. I think that's what the sickest part was. Yeah. You know, so with skateboarding, it's like I would add my skateboarding to like fashion. You know what I mean? I, did, I didn't have money for like high fashion clothes at the time when I was a kid, but I still went to like Walmart and like wanted to look a certain way. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I've always been so fascinated with like portraying myself a certain way. Yeah, and, and speaking on you know Walmart, I mean? Walmart saved a nigga life because I grew up poor too. Walmart had these black skinny jeans. Uh, I didn't know, I didn't know. Bro, like at the time they were like fucking $15. Like it was my first pair of skinnies. Bro, like, I used to buy Wranglers at Walmart for $9.99. Nine ninety nine, bro, and they were, they don't make those Wranglers anymore. Type shit. When was the first time you ever, um, you know, worked in the in music industry? Like, what was there anything you ever done or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, so this was the first thing I ever did, and to be honest, I didn't even know who he was, bro. But I was in the Frank Ocean music video, and I only went because I used to be sponsored by this clothing company called Quiet Life, mm -hmm. and Quiet Life man uh, team manager, his name was Amp, and I remember he just called me one day. He's like, "Yo, like this dude's gonna have a music video." in um, Lancaster, mm -hmm. it was far as fuck, bro. He's like, yeah, he just wants, he just wants a couple of skaters, like, you know what I mean? So we went, and it was the Frank Ocean music video for Forrest Gump, and I remember. Wow. Yeah, bro, it was crazy. I was in that music video, and I forget sometimes that I was, but that was like the first time like I was ever in something musically. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything musically, by the way. I don't. Yeah. I have zero music bones in me type shit. I got no taste for that shit. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds good, but I don't ever think I can like make something. You know, I play yeah. guitar here and there type shit. But that was the first time I ever did anything, and then after that. I got super into the uh, underground scene. Mm -hmm. I'm not even lying, bro. I seen like I swear to God, I seen Cardi perform like I'm not lying, like dead ass, real number, 14, 15 times. I wow. like I I went to his show. I saw Uzi like 10 times. I mm -hmm. saw Young Thug. I swear to God, these are real numbers. I yeah. saw Young Thug like 15 times. Yeah. I saw Yachty like three times. Who else, bro? I, I like I saw so many people. And it was just because, again, it was their aesthetic. It was their lifestyle. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's, it's more than like how the music sounds. It's just like how they portray their craft. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, the, the overall product, um, true artistry, 100%. just like I've, having every single aspect of that dialed in dialed to in, one bro, cohesive vision, you know? It's more than the music. It's yeah. more than like singing, oh, I was a low key assess fucking <laughs> 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 assess position. But anyway, it's more than the music, bro. It's just how you carry yourself and how you look and how your music videos are, whatever the fuck it is, you know? But yeah, bro, I just went to like hella underground fucking shows, bro. Yeah, and being in LA and going to like, if you don't know, like the Santa Ana Observatory, oh, like bro. some of the best memories I've had Crazy. at that, that venue. Bro, swear to God, so check this out, quick story, short story. I went to go see Uzi there, bro, and, um, and he brought me on stage, bro. I don't fucking know how. This was like 2016, 17, swear to God. Mm -hmm. Uzi brought me on stage and, um, I forgot what he said, but he brought me on stage and then he's like, he told the crowd like in his, in his fucking mic, he's like, yo, somebody flick us up. And like the whole crowd flicked us up. And I remember he told me in my ear, he's like, um, I want you to front flip off this shit. So I was like, all right, bet, fuck yeah, I'm gonna do that shit, you know? Mm. But I remember I said, you're gonna know who I am. I swear to God wow. on my mother's life, bro, on my fucking mother's life, I told him that. Like he told me, yo, I'm, I'm gonna need you to front flip into the crowd. And right away, I'm like, you're going to know who I am. Mm -hmm. I swear to God. And then, you know, took Fast a couple forward. of steps back. No, no, no. Steps back and oh. then fucking front flipped in that bitch. And then that was that. That was 2017, I'm going to say. 16, 17. I said that shit, bro. And you know what's crazy? It's like, I didn't say that shit, like, confidently. I just said it because I was like, you know, it, mm -hmm. it'll, be, it'll be fun to say this. I didn't think that would, like, I, I just said it, bro. I just and said now, it. looking at everything, it's like, Uzi definitely knows who you are. Yeah. Crazy, man. <laughs>
<laughs> ah, fucking crazy, yeah. No. You know, what, um, obviously, you know, with Uzi knowing you and everyone that knows you now, um, there was a moment that started it all for you. You're wearing these off-white. Oh, you're a fucking good dude. That's you're wearing crazy. all these, you know, <laughs> off-white Jordans, Nike Blazers, you know, all the, the great shoes Virgil designed that we yeah. love. And you were doing something at the time where niggas was scratching their head like, twin, you good? Like, yeah. why are you skating in these $2,000 shoes? Like, I didn't know they were expensive like that, though. You know. But, but the thing is that since you didn't know they were expensive, like, so there was no, like, thought put into it that, like, yo, if I do this, I'm going to go viral and going to go up or this and that? Or I did was. it for that. I, dude, I did it because I knew I was going to go viral. Mm -hmm. Like, I knew that shit 100% because... I think the first pair that Virgil sent me, I forgot what it... No, like, oh. even before he sent you the shoes, before, you were skating before... Bro, I, so check this out. My, my best friend, Marcel, that's my fucking brother, bro, Marcel Heard. He let me borrow Yeezy Runners. I just skated them because I thought it was funny type shit. And then that video got, like, close to a million views. I think, like, 800,000 800, views. Mm -hmm. And I had, like, 12,000 followers at the time, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then, like, that was when I officially was like, okay... I could do this. You're gonna push like, it. I, I'm gonna do it, but I didn't do it. Like I didn't skate in them to be like, I'm gonna get views. I just did it because I just like fuck it. I'm, this is funny, you know. Like mm -hmm. who, who, no one's ever done this, so I did it, and then I saw what happened, and I'm like, oh, what the fuck? I'm gonna take this shit to the next level. So mm -hmm. when I was doing that, uh, Virgil DM me. But the thing is, I swear to God, I didn't even know who he was, bro. Like I just oh, remember wow. opening my uh, requested DM, and it was a dude with the blue check mark. I never. Never have spoken to anyone with the blue check mark. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was like, what the fuck? Who is this dude? And he pretty much just said, like, yo, like, I really fuck with what you're doing. Like, you have a sick look. Like, let me just send you clothes and just skate in it. And, like, that's it. Then he started sending me all these shoes that I didn't know were worth a lot. Because, bro, I'm not going to lie. I was never a sneakerhead. I've never. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't care about sneakers. Like, mm -hmm. I really don't. So it started going up from there, bro. I got like a contract with StockX because of him. Like, oh, yeah, and then you were having a little tag on shit. Yes, yeah, bro. I remember that. I Nigga, that I was show. watching the videos. I was like, yo, Twiggo, bro, crazy. Bro, nah, dead ass. I, I low key, like, I did that shit on purpose too. But now nah, I remember at my contract with StockX, it said if I wanted to, I can still, I can uh, have the tag hanging. They would pay me more if I had the tag hanging. So I did it for the money too. But I also knew that people were going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, take the tag off. Mm hmm. And yeah. Let me say something real quick about StockX. Hold up. Bro, deadass, I was the first skater on StockX. Like, I remember they were paying me a lot, bro. And, bro, I could, like, ollie up a curb type shit. And they'd be like, oh, my God, yes. Like, there was no skaters wow. on StockX. Not even, like, working there type shit, you know? Mm -hmm. But now it's so different. They got, like, skate Every, there's, there's everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because, you know, you're now coming to that point where you're starting to, I'm guessing, make money off of, you know, skating and everything. Yeah. I'm sure you're yes. making some money here and there. But now, like, you're touching, you're touching chicken now. What yeah. was that moment like, you know, starting to get bread? It was amazing, bro. It was amazing. Like, I lived a very, like, I didn't grow up rich at all. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. when I started getting money like that, it was life-changing, bro. Like, literally, like, I couldn't believe I was getting paid that much. You know what I mean? And, like, such a blessing, you know? Yeah. So I was getting a little over, like, 10000 a month just for one skate clip, bro. Like, just for one video. I'm being dead serious. Let me tell you, bro, I'm telling you, this could be a long ass interview if I like actually deep dive, but no, I'm being serious, bro. 10 bands Ten just for bands, one video? Bro, I promise you, like, it was fucking crazy. That's why I'm like trying to think, I'm like, what the fuck? Now, now I feel stupid, cause I'm like, Damn, I was on StockX for like two years, like where the fuck is that money at type shit? You know what I mean? I feel stupid. <laughs> it's I'm like, in Balenci. Hey, yeah, <laughs> that is a fact, my brother. That is a fucking fact. <laughs> nah. But yeah, bro, I'm telling you, when I, when I was on StockX, like there was nobody on, like there was All not a money went to you. All the money went to me, like, literally, bro. And it was amazing, bro. Like, it was amazing. Now, like, I, the reason why me and StockX, like, uh, separate, like, we went our separate ways is because they were trying to do too much skate shit. Like, they were, like, trying to fly me out to, like, Copenhagen. And that's not me. I'm not a skater. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I just didn't, like, I got different ideas and I got different things I need to accomplish type mm -hmm. shit, you know? So, yeah, unfortunately, me and StockX, you know? What was it like being in that position now to be able to take care of your mom as a developing man? Like that's like one of the best things you can possibly Absolutely. do for yourself. Absolutely, bro. I'm not even lying though. I'm not even like nowhere near close where I want to be. So it doesn't even like, 
like I'm helping my mom, but I'm not like changing her life. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. when I'm gonna be like, fuck, I'm like, I'm happy. I'm like set. You know what I mean? I'll be like satisfied when I'm like, when I take her out of work type shit. You know what yeah. I mean? She like still works at Costco, clocks in at like 4 a.m., comes out like at two type shit. She works in a freezer. It's not even Costco like store, it's the warehouse. Damn. Like it's the freezer, bro. Like, no, literally she works in a freezer. Mm -hmm. And like that shit kills me, bro. Like I just wish I could just fucking change my mom's life, bro. Like right now, you know, but it shit doesn't happen overnight. It takes time for sure. And I, I think you're definitely gonna get to that point, you know, like everything's pointing in the right, that direction. Speaking on the moment, right, just of you meeting Cardi, mm -hmm. like, and I'm sure everyone wants to know, how did this happen? How did you and Cardi get close, mm -hmm. you know? I wanna that. say real quick that everything that has came to my fucking head, bro, mm -hmm. except become like a millionaire, everything that's ever came to my head, bro, that shit came true. Yeah. And there's a difference between wanting shit and yeah. knowing shit. And I fucking know. This was probably, I swear to God, bro, this was like 10 days before a whole lot of red dropped. Had a girlfriend at the time, we were driving, and I swear to God, on my mother's life, bro, one day I literally was like, I don't know, I was telling her, I was like, I don't know why, but I feel like Cardi's gonna message me. He messaged me the next day. On my mother's life, I put that shit on everything, bro. Like, I literally told her that. I'm like, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why. I just feel like he is. Next day, bro, he DMs me and he just said, hi. That's it, hi. I remember showing her too and she's like, did you have any proof? Like, wh why did you say that? And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I knew it. So I'm like a very, bro, manifestation is everything type shit. You know what to I mean? you, for sure. For, bro, bro. I'm telling you, bro, there's a difference between wanting and knowing. If you know something, mm -hmm. It's gonna happen, bro. Yeah. Like, you gotta believe in yourself type shit. You know what I mean? So anyway, he DM'd me, bro. And then, again, pretty much same shit that Virgil told me. Like, yo, you're fucking fire. Like, you're so sick. Your look, blah, blah, blah. I think that was like, let me just say a, a random date. But like, let's say December 17th, right? Mm -hmm. That was that day. Dropped a whole lot of red December 25th. And then he DM'd me again, like December 27th. And was like, yo, I got a, like a virtual reality show. Like, I want you to come. Yeah. That was like that New was Year's. The that was New Year's. Yeah, I remember. That, that was the first day I ever met him. Mm -hmm. And the first day I ever met him, I was on stage with him. Wow. And I never thought that was possible. Mm -hmm. I just went, just probably for the vibes and shit. You know, he didn't tell me, like, exactly that I was going to be on stage. He just said, you know, like, come with me. So we went, and then I was on stage with him, and then that was that. Like, that's how our relationship started. So how did your relationship grow now, like, you know, into you working with him? Because... You are in OPM, right? Yeah. And you know, how did it turn into that? And what, you know, everybody else that we know is in OPM for, for the most part is already ra like a rapper yeah. or this and that. Like how does your role in OPM, like what do you do for OPM? So I'm like signed to OPM as a creative consultant, stylist, and a model. Okay. So, and let me, let me say something real quick. Um, I style Cardi, but he doesn't need me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need a stylist. Do you know what I mean? Like we're just good friends and he just asks me to do shit, but I don't ever want to be like, I'm his stylist. Yeah. Like, I, I, no, like, I'm 90% his friend, and then like 10% of whatever the fuck it is that the internet sees type shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I do that. So I guess that's like my role. But again, I don't, I never want to be like, I do this, I do that. Like, that's whack as fuck, bro. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not that dude, trust. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, I do that. Oh, tight. So do you remember like the first, time like you styled him or anything like that or like helped you know help with a shoot or a show mm, the first time I styled him I think it was rolling loud LA he okay. was wearing the uh, what's the bear show? was that the one with the he was wearing he was wearing a big ass uh, parka vetmont oh, okay. uh, jacket it's actually was it the one when he had the devil yes horns? yes yeah I was that was the first that. show he ever started yelling like, mm -hmm. ah, like that type of vibe. Yeah. Literally, bro, his show is like, you're entering hell. That's oh, how wow. I like to see it. Like, literally, bro. Like, he don't I mean, even, it, the, the vibes is definitely the vibes, there. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he literally, you're entering hell when you're fucking there, bro. Like, like not even on no, like, satanic shit. Like, nah, literally, bro, go to a show yeah. and just hear this man. And he's just like, that shit's so fire. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, you're entering a different world, bro. Mm -hmm. Not even on no corny shit. Like, that's just the truth. But anyway, um, so that was that. And then I think like, 
times after that, I don't really remember how, dude, I, I don't know, I can't Because it's so casual with you. Exactly, exactly. It's, uh, it's not even like a like, real, like, I'm not pulling up the exactly. sound. It's like, bro, this is what I'm on, like. Like, for example, like, like check this out. Like, we went to Miami for Donda 2, right? Mm -hmm. He called me and he said, yo, I'm going to fly you out. I need you to style me. Didn't really even style him because I was on stage with him and yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I went initially to like style him but i'm sure he maybe already knew what he wanted like he was like nah i'm gonna have him on stage with me but he didn't want to tell me that type yeah. shit, you know so that's that and then went overseas with him and then styled him for all that we went to like 10 different cities like norway yeah like switzerland like there's a video of you in that time when you like did like front flips like three yeah. shows <laughs> that, no, was, that was nuts what Bro, was it like you know being on the stage now and like you know, performing overseas with Cardi. Cardi at this moment is like putting on one of the best shows, I think, yeah. you know, in the world. Um, so what was that moment like, you know, doing those front flips and having fun and vibing out with the guys? I think the most dangerous front flip I did was I was wearing a white narcissist tank and bro, I'm not lying, like this stage, that, bro, I'm not lying, I could have low key died. Like, I swear to God, like, I had to pray real quick right before, you know what I mean? To like not fucking die. Mm -hmm. But I remember I also, he told me to take, I was literally wearing these, not duct tape though. These are building out Crocs. And I wear these all the time. But he told me to take them off because he knew how, bro, I could literally hurt someone when I, you know what I mean? So he's like, yeah. yo, I need you to take off your boots for sure because I don't want you to fucking hit someone, you know? But mm -hmm. that front flip alone, bro, that shit was terrifying. I did that shit. Like, I'm, I'm not going to back out. I'm not no bitch, you know what yeah. I mean? I'm going to do that shit. But bro, the, the stage and like the crowd was like far away as fuck and the stage was high as fuck, you know what I mean? So, yeah. and also bro, like there's no way I am not gonna do that. Like, you know what I mean? Like I yeah. gotta do that shit. Like I'm a front flip in that bitch. Cause like, I'm gonna do that shit. Like that shit's I mean, it's totally natural. Like yeah. you're on stage, you gotta come off one way. 100%. You know I mean? that, uh, was, that was Poland too, by the way. But, but being overseas with him, bro, was insane. Like witnessing him, like, Again, you know, obviously I'm like hanging out with him more mm -hmm. than being with him on stage type shit, you yeah. know? So like seeing that side of him was just insane, bro. How do you, so, you know, you are a consultant, right? How, and a creative consultant at that. Like how do you go about, or for example, like things you've done as a creative consultant that we might not know about or we've seen, like, you know what I mean? I was actually gonna start creative directing Marilyn Manson, bro. It didn't work out though. You were supposed to create a direct for him? Yes. Wow. Yeah, bro. Swear How to God. How did that come about? Like, I met Marilyn Manson at Kanye's Sunday service, and then we just had a good re like friendship, relationship, whatever the fuck you want to call it, you know. So then, he wanted to like uh, revamp his whole career type shit, you know, because he hasn't released music in a while. So he asked me to like help him out. Um, but he has other shit right now that's going on, you know? And you know, now into your own endeavors, um, your brand. Um, speak a little bit about that. You know, what's it been like, you know, getting that together and the whole process? The first inspiration 100% was Virgil, bro. I remember I was working at Costco. My mom got me a job there for like a month. Mm -hmm. Fucking hated it. But I remember one day I was on break. It was like 7 a.m. because I clocked in like at 5 a.m. And I text him, bro, and I'm like, dude, I'm so depressed. Like, fuck this life type shit. You know what I mean? Like, I hate working. Like, what do I do? And then he pretty much just said, like, you should like start screen printing t-shirts. And I promise you that you'll make more than a nine to five. Like, you'll, you won't even be working as hard. Mm -hmm. And you'll be making like way more than a nine to five. And you'll be happier. Mm -hmm. So I took that shit to heart, bro. And dude, the inspiration is him, bro. What does Virgil's, you know, legacy mean to you and, you know, like his contributions to, you know, the culture that, you know, you surround yourself with? He's the GOAT because he just did so much. Like, not only was he like an architect, but he was in fashion and he was a DJ and yeah. he was like, he was Limitless, fucking everywhere, say, bro. Like, he was literally sky's the limit type shit, yeah. you know what I mean? And other than that, he was just an amazing human, bro. Like, he was so nice, like not one negative word would come out of this man's mouth you know mm -hmm. what i mean so to explain virgil yes Aldo, i think you know you can't really put into words who, no you really can't you, there's some words you can use but i would like to think he's just so much bigger he's than, so much bigger than clothes or whatever the yeah. fuck it was bro like he was just the best at like being a human this yeah. is a super uh rare balenciaga piece i've never seen anything like this yeah um, Man, how do you go about shopping these days? Like, how do you find pieces? And, you know, if you can give a little jam or a little sauce or like, like what's, what's your everyday life like 
you know, trying to get clothes. I'm a fucking grailed addict, bro. Like, <laughs> dead ass. Like, I've probably done this like a million times, this shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, scrolling and shit. I just love, I love clothes, bro. Like, not even, I know, lame ass shit, bro. But like, when I was a kid, like, I know I'm not handsome and shit like that. You know what I mean? But when I found clothes, it made me feel some type of way. I, mm -hmm. I felt like, not a superhero, but I felt like, damn, like I feel good type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So clothes just like, it helps me express how I'm feeling that day without opening my mouth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm not a dude, like, like I love Balenciaga, but I'm not going to like, I don't go to Balenciaga and be like, oh, this, that, and then like, nah, nah, like I don't, like, I like shit that's not really necessarily seen. I'm not gonna wear like a Balenciaga fucking hoodie just cause it says Balenciaga. Yeah. Like I love Balenciaga because of Demna. Like I wear Vetmont like 2016 and 18 because of Demna type mm -hmm. shit. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't even have to be Balenciaga. I just love him. Like his craft is, bro, he, he is the, like, in my opinion, Demna is the greatest designer ever. Yeah. I like to look like a fucking millionaire homeless person. Bum fly. Bum fucking fly. That's what me and my homies called it that in ass. high school. We That's the first that. time I heard that. But. We were on some bum fly <laughs> shit. Coin that here. Me yeah. and the homies know, but we would call it bum fly. Bum fly. That's, that's what you do on. on some bum fly shit. Yeah. So one of the, you know, a moment I was watched in real time was I was in Miami. I was at the Donda shit. I did see you, Cardi. You wow. And yeah, and Kanye. I saw the whole thing. It was Marilyn crazy. Manson. Marilyn Manson. Yeah. You know, the Migos came out, yeah. Jack Harlow. I was in there watching it. I was like, and you know, it was a moving, Kanye like literally showed us like a, a album in the making, yeah. literally. Yeah. Um, it was crazy. Um, what was that moment like for you? Because you were on the stage and we didn't really get to tap into that because the whole world was watching that. The night before we were all in the studio too. So like, I think the night before was like crazier just because I was like, I was witnessing them like just make, make be dialed in and shit, you know what I mean? Be like fucking clocked in, which was fucking insane. But I feel like the next day happened so fast, bro. Like I just remember like walking out with Cardi. As and, and one of the things about you, I don't know if people know this, but you are sober. You don't drink, yeah. you don't smoke, no, you don't, I don't do, do drugs. I'm Why sober. is it, what makes you, you know, want to stay sober and everything? My mom, bro, like dead ass. I was saying earlier, like I grew up um, just like skateboarding and just, I was like alone a lot type shit, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I didn't even have too many friends that skated, but like I just remember my mom, like she would be working so much and she'd always tell me like, let me find one little silly thing you fucking do. Yeah. And like you're done. And like not only you're done, but I'm done. Like my mom's saying like that would fucking kill me. Yeah. And just like it is with fashion or skateboarding, bro, like I have such an addictive personality type shit, you know what I mean? So I feel like if I was to get into drugs, mm -hmm. bro, that shit would be bad. I'm allergic to alcohol though. You are. I can't even consume beer, wine, tequila. I cannot. I would literally find out that you were allergic. That's a great question. <laughs> it's a long ass story, bro. But uh, long story short, I had a girl over, and I wanted to be cute and be like, let's have a wine night type shit. You know what I mean, bro? I had like two sips of this wine, and it was a new girl. This is the first time I ever seen this girl. Mm -hmm. She was fire as fuck, bro. I'm talking like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, drink like two sips, bro. And I start feeling disgusting and I'm like, whoa. I'm like, in, in my head, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? I was like, what the fuck? And then I literally was like, hey, like, excuse me. Like, I'm literally gonna go throw up. And then I threw up like five times, came back down, sat with her, still felt like shit. It was just repetitive. I just kept throwing up, throwing up. And I know what you're gonna say. Oh, you probably, you know, why don't you try something else? Bro, like, I'm at a point where I don't even want to try, like, an alternative because that pain that I go through when I have, like, that sickness moment is the fucking worst, bro. Yeah. Like, I feel, like, literally dying. Two sips, bro, I'm literally throwing up, and I feel like, it, dude, it's insane. Yeah, it's, like, it's not, not even it. worth it. I mean, at this point, I'm guessing the only thing you do do is just smoke fucking cigarettes. I like cigarettes, yeah, I like cigarettes. Yeah, chain smoking cigarettes. I see that <laughs> ashtray. That shit is fucking nuts. One of the things that stuck out to me that you said was, um, I'm not famous. No. I'm not any of that. No. Like, you know, wow. Even it was in your hype beast, hype beast like uh, feature that you had and there's like videos and pictures of you. Cardi, Kanye, the most famous people. Like, so how would you kind of explain like your situation? Cause you know, to some degree, not even to some degree, you are famous. So 
I guess I would really want to say is like, what to you makes a famous person? Kanye, Cardi, people that like actually bring, I, I don't want to knock myself down, I promise. I don't want to speak negative of myself, but mm -hmm. people that bring value to shit, bro. Like people that make you certain feel a certain way. Like, for example, Cardi, like mm -hmm. it's his music, but it's also his clothes and just people want to be like him. Do you know what I mean? Like that shit, that's a fan, bro. Like low key, like I don't, I don't like to say I have fans either, bro. Cause that's whack and corny, bro. Like, but I'm not even, I'm not saying like, oh, I don't have fans, so I won't sound corny or whatever. But no, genuinely, like, I don't think I'm, I, I really do think I'm a nobody. I'm a regular ass dude, bro. Like, I've just been blessed with certain scenarios and shit. I, I, I'm blessed to be like at certain rooms with people type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, it just, bro, like, I'm a normal ass kid, bro. Trust. Like, you're a normal ass kid that have definitely been to some crazy rooms and shit. I mean, I think that night at the Donda shit, fucking Elon Musk was there. Yeah, I know, I met him. What the fuck was that like? He was staring at me weird though, cause I had my hair up and all that shit, you know? But mm -hmm. it was sick. He's very uh, low key, he's, he's obviously amazing, but very robotic, you know? Like, hello. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> no, I'm like, sure you were tripping. He was, he like, was tripping out over like, you, but nigga, you was tripping out over him. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk, bro. Nah, yeah, yeah he's, he's nice though. But nah, back to the whole like famous shit, bro. I just, I'm not, I'm not famous, bro. And, and let's just say, okay, let me just put this in to perspective, bro. Like, I'm not, like. You are famous though. I appreciate that. I, like dead ass, but like, like, let me say this, bro. Like, you don't I've, care to be famous is a different thing. But let me, famous. let me, let me say like, like a random ass kid and fucking wherever city it is, right? Mm -hmm. Boring ass city. Like, that dude has done things that I haven't. And I've done things that he haven't. Yeah. So like, it's an endless cycle. Who's winning? Like, mm -hmm. just cause I've done shit that like, people have seen, doesn't make me better than the fucking yeah. kid that's like designing clothes in a fucking basement in fucking Albuquerque, Mexico type shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think you're just valuing humility and being human. We're all human, bro. Anything, like, you know? at the end of the day, like, we're all gonna die the same, not the same, but like we're all literally, our body is gonna disintegrate yeah. and like nothing matters, bro. Like nothing Where matters. Where do you feel like world. those values and just that viewpoint come from for you? Like, I've just always been this way, bro. Low key. Yeah. Like, I've always been like this. I never, ever wanna like be like, I'm better than you, I'm cooler than you, whatever the fuck it is. Like, bro, I like, nah, like that's not it, bro. Like, yeah. and not even on no corny shit, bro, but like I really do feel like in order to succeed at life, mm -hmm. you just gotta be a genuine nice person, bro. You gotta have a good heart and not like a fake good heart, but like actually just be a good person, bro. And mm -hmm. that like life is gonna reward you so much more whenever you're just like on the ground, humble type shit, you know? Yeah. But I don't even wanna say that cause I don't wanna seem like I'm fake nice or good hearted or humble. Like it's just what it is, bro. Like. I grew up in a normal ass family, fucking eating like a cup of noodles and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, and now you got a fucking living in <laughs> Beverly Hills and got a closet probably worth what? 200K <laughs> in Balenciaga. Uh, what do you say is your most expensive piece that you have? 5,000 on a jacket. I've spent 4,000 on boots. Probably the most expensive piece, maybe like 5.5. Wow. What yeah. is this? What is this? Balenciaga piece? Moto. Okay. The jacket. It's like a racing jacket. Yeah. yeah. That jacket is fire. The boots is crazy two. too. Yeah, two of them? Cardi has one. I got one. Fire. Yeah. That's a good piece. Um, he hasn't given it back. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> My jacket is in, is in his closet right now, which is totally fine. You ain't getting that back, yeah. man. <laughs> I'm really mad. I'm not you're, gonna lie. You ain't getting that back. Oh, uh, man. Um, <laughs> well, shit, man. Like, what, what's next for, for you, man? Like, what do you what do you want to do like next coming year? We're at the fucking January now, like yeah. next year. Like, what's some plans for you? I want to become a creative director, and I'm not saying within like a year, or whatever. That I think that's like my long term goal. Mm -hmm. Now I I want to like be in control of something that mm -hmm. like, I'm very much. Is there a dream brand in mind? Man, manifestation's big. For I know, you, no, Put it is, it is, bro, it is. To be honest, I don't have one right now. Okay. No, I don't. I, I'm like it's I'm always evolving do you know what I mean like yeah different so rates I, I for don't sure. know what I'm gonna like in a year or so type shit you know what I mean I, I, I honestly I just want to make my Kim Kruger shit like sick yeah like I don't even really give a fuck about like making it like hella like famous and shit I just want to like be passionate about my own craft bro because if you really think about it like 
everything I did from like this point, like it brought me here. Yeah. And it was because I was passionate when I was a kid or whatever the fuck it was. You know what I mean? I didn't do mm -hmm. shit to like be sitting here. Everything I did, I did it because I thought it was sick. And like now it's like, oh shit, everything worked out. Do you know what I mean? So I want to go back to like my earlier roots and just like whatever the fuck I like, I just want to, I want to do. It's like this, bro. It's like, I feel like everyone, especially in LA, they want like whatever the fuck, the fame, the girls, the cars, whatever the fuck it is. But like, they just got to focus on their craft, bro, because everything else is going to be up there. It's going to come when with you're, it. When you're, bro, when you're like up, everything's going to be up there. You don't got to think about the girls, the cars, what, everything is going to be up there when you're like killing it at life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't want to be like, I want a G-Wagon. I want like, no, I, fuck that. I just want to like do what I want to do. I want to be passionate. I want to just be motivated. And I know that everything else is going to be on top. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's kind of like with your dad, like growing up, your dad's like, he tells you, he's just like, I mean, I, my dad at least, and I think majority of dad's like, yeah, don't worry about girls, just get money. Yeah. That shit's gonna come with it. My dad's a fucking cocksucker, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, um, yeah. well, we usually do this to close it out and everything. What is your message for our generation? And I know that everyone always says like, be you, but bro, just be a kid, man. Like, I'm never gonna stop being a kid. You know what I mean? I'm always gonna be passionate about what the fuck I wanna do. And that's just, that's what's gonna keep me happy, bro. Cause I don't want to be in my deathbed and like be like, what if this or what if that? Like everything I do, like I do it because I do it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And like never listen to anyone, bro, ever. Like I wish I had a better message to say, but no, that's I'm really bad right. at elaborating myself. But never stop being a kid, bro, and just focus on yourself. Like don't even focus on like, I'm talking to kids and shit, you know? Like don't focus on like girls or like, or any of that, bro. Just focus on you. Like, like, just know what you want. Look at yourself in the fucking mirror and be like, I like what I see. And that's it. Walk yeah. with your, like, walk like if you got the greatest swag. Like, be confident as fuck. Confidence is everything, bro. Yeah. If you don't believe something, no one else is going to believe that shit. If you don't believe in yourself, no one's going to believe in that shit, bro. Trust. So the first person that's got to believe in something is you. Once you believe it, then fucking make everyone else believe that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Fake it till you make it. Whatever the fuck it is, bro. Like, just do that shit and be confident. That's it. Literally. My, my boy, I appreciate you so yes, much. Of course. Thank you. Of course.